Additional films are the first hectic hours of the drive from Aachen. A 4.2 inch mortar opens fire. This action, on the left flank of the offensive before the Cologne plain, is launched from Bayswiler, Germany. The enemy's stubborn resistance against our drives to Ruhr River Line objectives at Lunich and Jülich has cost him losses in both men and materiel. Smoke screens the advance as the 9th Army continues northeast from Aachen, while the 1st Army advances due east from Durin. Thousands of prisoners are taken in the first week of the new drive. The Americans continue on toward Geilenkirchen, which falls on 19th November. Here, almost the entire area is found to be thoroughly mined and booby-trapped. Uncovering a German shoe mine, or wooden box mine. The simple little box with hinged cover contains about a half-pound block of explosive. Into it is screwed the pull fuse containing the detonator, now being removed. Six to 11 pounds of pressure will explode the charge. Activating and disarming of the anti-personnel mine is demonstrated by an officer of the combat engineers. The minefields in the Aachen area constitute some of the chief menaces to the Allied push. Safe and rapid removal of these obstructions is mandatory if the drives are to gain full momentum. About 300 mines were found, some loosely scattered about, others ingeniously hidden. With the area cleared, infantrymen proceed northeast and east of Geilenkirchen. Meanwhile, at Mayo, reoccupied by British forces in southeastern Holland on 16th November, the mine menace is met with a new detector. It's a tube about six feet long, through which is forced compressed air. The effect is to blow away the earth covering to reveal the buried mine. Many wooden box mines and teller mines are found. Pull wires are fixed around the uncovered mines, which are removed by sappers of a Scottish division. Teller mines are placed in a crater in an open field where they will be exploded by gelignite. The mines are set off 10 to 20 at a time. For France, at the southern end of the 450-mile front, the German garrison is almost completely wiped out as the French First Army takes over on 22nd November. The Nazis had been attempting to stem the Allied push so that their troops in the Vosges Mountains could escape across the Rhine. The combined drives of the American 7th Army and the French troops had made enemy positions in these mountains untenable. The seizure of Balfour is climaxed by an attack on fanatically resisting troops in the Chateau de Balfour, 17th century fortification. Commando d'Afrique man a 57 millimeter gun. After its fall on the morning of the 25th, the fort area is inspected by Major General Armand Chaillet, commanding French artillery. From the chateau's roof, the general looks out upon the captured city of Belfort. German prisoners are marched through the streets. While Belfort was being reduced, 
Malouz had also been taken by French units who entered the Alsatian city after reaching the Rhine. Malouz, the first large city in the path of the French advance up the Rhine Valley, has a population of around 100,000. By 23rd November, most of the city was freed of Germans except the Hermann Goering barracks which held out for several days. Tanks blast Nazi strong points. Up of prisoners continues even after Malouz is won. They're comprised of Nazi patrols which slipped into the city at night. As late as 10th December, German soldiers were still being removed from hiding places. A squad of infantrymen on a jungle snap shooting course. The course is designed to train jungle fighters to be on the alert against infiltrating Japs. Reaching the starting point in the testing area, men get the go signal to cover the course for record. The terrain has been devised to simulate the paths, undergrowth, and dense foliage whose concealment the Jap soldier is constantly using for ambush and sniping tactics. <laughs> Students receive individual tests. Their aptitude recorded on a score chart. Included in the test is the correct method of advancing through brush. On the alert for a surprise attack. Meanwhile, the tripper gets ready to operate a mechanically contrived target. Practicing on dummies, the soldier's pretty good. And real jungle with live Japs won't exactly slow down his reflexes. A tally is made at the completion of the test, the score checked against the standard of fighting efficiency set up for jungle warfare. At Quinsano, Italy, on 11th November, a 155 rifle is minus its breech block after exploding while firing. The cause was not immediately determined. The severed section dug a hole 12 feet long and 4 feet deep in the ground back of the gun. One man was killed. Nine others of a field artillery battery were seriously wounded. Elsewhere on the Italian front, continued heavy rains, floods, and high winds make Allied offensive operations virtually impossible. Any existing activity is confined to patrol skirmishes without appreciable alteration to forward positions. This is Highway 6531 leading to the front. Bivouac areas also were reduced to quagmires, adding to the burdens of hard-pressed maintenance crews. Reports from the front say it's impossible to exaggerate the harshness of this year's Italian winter. Red Army artillery officers plot a barrage at a command post on the Warsaw Front in September. <laughs> tanks reveal the extent of damage inflicted on German armor deployed on the east bank of the Vistula River as the Red Army drive nears Warsaw's fortress suburb of Praga. An advance by T-34 medium tanks. 
The T-34 mounts a 76.2 millimeter gun and is characterized by its sloping armor. Its Christie type suspension is an American design of more than 25 years ago. A bombing and strafing run on Warsaw. These are believed to be SU-2 general purpose planes. Smashed steel and concrete bunkers, part of a system of permanent German fortifications protecting the east bank of the Vistula. Construction of these defenses was begun after the Nazi debacle at Stalingrad, 1,200 miles to the east. Commanders of the first white Russian army. Marshal Rokossovsky, victor of Stalingrad, in command at Warsaw. After a six-day assault, Russian spearheads from northeast, east, and southeast converge on Praga on 14th September. Red army men advance through Praga after street barricades and pillboxes are blasted by tanks and artillery. First aid station marked in Polish and German. Elements of the first white Russian army enter the center of the suburb which lies across the river from Warsaw proper. A few citizens emerge from hiding to cheer their liberators. Officers of the Polish Committee on National Liberation. A Soviet representative confers with General Rolozmierski, commanding Polish troops allied with the Russians. In burning Warsaw, the Nazis crushed the revolt begun on 1st August by Polish General Komarowski, known as General Bohr, while the Russian offensive is held at the Vistula. Superfortresses of the newly constituted 21st Bomber Command arrive at Isley Field, Saipan on 12th October, three months after the island was secured. As elements of General Henry H. Arnold's 20th Air Force, their mission is to bomb the Japanese home islands from the east, supplementing activity of the 20th Bomber Command from the west. Jubilant Air Corps personnel turn out to welcome the B-29 crews led by Brigadier General Haywood S. Hansel, Jr., in charge of the 21st Bomber Command. The target is Tokyo, as men of the 21st are briefed for the first strike at the Jap capital since Colonel Jimmy Doolittle's carrier-based raid in April 1942. Preparing for the assault on Tokyo of the 24th November. Commenting on this first of a new series of blows, Lieutenant General Millard Harmon, Deputy Commander of the 20th Air Force, said, No part of the homeland of Japan is now safe from land-based air attacks. We can hit where and when we choose. Brigadier General Emin O'Donnell, Jr., leader of the task force, is ready as the 11-man crew of a superfort receives a final briefing from A-2. General O'Donnell and crew board Dauntless Dotty. miles northwest, half of the large task force is assigned to bomb the Musashina aircraft engine plant, 11 miles from the heart of Tokyo. The other half is to raid the city and dock areas. Weather is clear over the target as the superforts near, but cloud interference rapidly increases. Tokyo below.
One of our new type destroyers escorting a Pacific carrier force. Objective, the Philippine capital of Manila. On 5th November, the Navy films show planes of the 3rd Fleet preparing for a strike against Jap air and naval concentrations. Radio silence prevails, but last minute messages are delivered via plane. The first planes take off at dawn. As daylight broadens, additional waves take off. Regarded as a major operation, the attack is Admiral William F. Halsey's answer to Japan's exaggerated claims of multiple sinkings of our carriers. It's an all-out effort to hasten victory on Leyte by knocking out the Jap supply funnel for the embattled area. Planes rendezvous preparatory to leaving for the target area. Hellcat fighters, Avenger torpedo planes, and Hell Diver bombers. Manila Bay, naval base for much of the shipping that supplies Japanese island outposts. Below are some of the enemy ships that fell victim to the smashing blows of our planes. In the background, Nichols Field in flames. A Jap cruiser is hit. Extending into its second day, the attack swells the toll of enemy ships sunk for damage to about 30, including many cargo ships. Meanwhile, our task force meets an attack by land-based enemy planes. One of our escort carriers is hit. shot down in this action. A near miss by a Jap bomb. Another enemy bomb barely misses its target. One of our planes receives a direct hit. Similar damage occurs on another carrier. Planes from the Manila attack return to their carriers, ending one of the most destructive raids of the Philippine campaign. Among their targets were air installations on seven fields in the Manila area. 327 enemy planes were caught and destroyed on the ground. 113 shot down in the air. Funeral rites aboard a U.S. carrier for a rear gunner. Mutilation of his body by shell burst, plus damage to the plane result in a strange burial at sea. While patrols circle overhead, Gunner and plane end their manila bomb run together in the waters of the Pacific. <laughs> 